a little kid, I was asked all the time, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would usually answer, I want to be an accountant because that's what my mom does. Or I want to be an engineer because that's what my dad does. But guess what? I became neither. I'm a molecular biologist, a medical doctor, and a reproductive toxicologist. These are just titles, but what do I actually do? I do science. I get to ask a lot of questions and I get to find out the answers to them. So how did I get where I am now? It wasn't like I knew from the very beginning that it's part of a grand scheme of things from the start. Instead, I took things one step at a time. When I was deciding what to do for university, I thought biology was interesting. And I was going through the course book, I saw molecular biology, so I took that. And while in university, I thought maybe I can be a doctor, so I took medical school. And in medical school, I loved learning a lot of new things, so it felt natural for me to do a PhD. A PhD where I'm studying the effects of environmental chemicals on the female reproductive health. But enough about me. That is my story. Now it's time for you to make your own story. What interests you? What do you enjoy the most? Do you like playing the guitar? Then maybe you can take music. Or do you like painting? Then maybe you can take arts. Or maybe you're like me, who is curious about the natural world and asks a lot of questions. Then maybe you can take science. But whatever you do, just follow your heart and be true to yourself. And you be you. Hello, my name is Anne. I'm 26 years old and I work as a researcher at the University of Aberdeen. Today, I'll show you what my colleagues and me work on. Safety first, so before starting to work, we put on our lab coats and safety specs and gloves. This is what our lab looks like. Here, all of us are microbiologists. This means that we study tiny living things. This could be bacteria or parasites. However, here in our lab, we study fungi. Fungi? No, not that kind. The fungi that we study are pathogenic yeasts. Here I've grown them in a petri dish, and this is what they look like under the microscope. But why are they even interesting? Excellent question. Our fungi of interest are so-called candida species. They harmlessly live in the gut of about 50 to 70% of people. There, they are part of a healthy microbiota and are surrounded by mostly beneficial bacteria. Although candida stays friendly most of the time, it can make people very sick when the right opportunities arise. This is why it is also called an opportunistic pathogen. For example, if a person's microbiota is out of balance because of severe antibiotic treatment, or their immune system isn't working well because of an organ transplantation, Candida can take advantage of this and cause an infection. When this happens, Candida can multiply and spread to the whole body. This can ultimately lead to death, if not treated in time and appropriately. Worldwide, more than 400,000 people get life-threatening infections every year, and depending on where on the planet the patient is, mortality ranges between 46 and 75 percent. This is a big problem, and my colleagues and me from the Von Homme Consortium across Europe are working together on a better understanding of the interaction between the fungus candida, the human host, and the microbiota. Together, we analyze the genomes of candida strains, the infection process, and how beneficial bacteria can stop candida infections. Hopefully, our research will lead to new treatment options and save lives in the future. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of candida research. Thanks for swinging by and watching! Hi, my name is Ying Wei, and I'm a regular human being living in the 21st century just like you. Unless this video survives into the next century, which would actually be a scary thought, what would the world look like in 80 years? Today, we know that climate change and plastic pollution 
are some of the biggest problems that we need to address urgently and I want to do everything I can to help. That is why I'm currently doing my PhD relating to high voltage cables. These cables transport electricity over very long distances efficiently to us. For cables that are buried underground or under the sea, the wire in the middle needs to be surrounded by an insulation layer. Polyethylene, which we find in plastic bags, is a good material for insulation, but it melts too easily. And if the insulation melts, the core will sink to the bottom, destroying the cable and causing a blackout, and we do not want that. That's why we need to make a material that is harder to melt. We can do that by adding polypropylene, which we find in takeaway boxes, with polyethylene, so that we can get a stronger material. However, these two plastics hate each other, and they do not want to work together. And my job is to coax them into working together to get a material that is harder to melt and hence strong at high temperatures. This will prevent a power cut. Hello, my name is Dr. Amy Prendergast and I'm currently based in the School of Arts, English and Languages at Queen's University Belfast in Northern Ireland. I'm currently working on a project on women's diaries in Ireland from about 1725 to 1810. One large focus of the project is on young people's diaries and adolescents in the 18th century. Frequently dismissed as preoccupied only with socialising and marriage prospects, the voices of the young women and adolescents have repeatedly been marginalised. My research prioritises both these voices and the diary form and fuses their legitimate interest in things such as dating with a concern and fascination with topics such as national identity, recognising the value of young women's opinions and demonstrating how we might better understand the evolution of personal identity through inclusion of such source material. In the different diaries, we see entries charting friendships and overbearing parents that coexist with others fearing singlehood or pining after a certain body shape. By writing in these diaries, all these young women are enabled to construct a sense of self and to better process difficult encounters or unfair dismissals as part of their attempts to negotiate the transition into adulthood. The diaries also record anxieties and preoccupations as well as the extreme difficulties encountered by certain women, such as their being pursued without their consent. They also record acts of bravery, such as the decision of two of the diarists to reject a heteronormative lifestyle and set up life together outside of Ireland. What's really key to my research is that the research questions driving my archival research and my textual interpretations are empowering and inclusive so that the research findings too can better enhance our understanding of society. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Tiani Ostelarufo and I'm from Greece. I graduated as a food microbiologist from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. My interests are on the topic of food safety, environmental protection, and alternative applications in food industries. During my degree, I participated in two different projects. In the first one, we extracted bioactive compounds from two different types of industrial waste, the grape pomace and pomegranate pills, and we incorporated them into other foods to increase their nutritional value. For the other, I had to travel to Malta, where my research was to evaluate the survival of fungus after exposure to nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are commonly used for food packaging materials due to their antimicrobial activity. After that trip, I decided to move to Malta to become a female researcher. Therefore, here I am now speaking to you as a PhD student and an early researcher from the, from the University of Malta. I belong to an ITN Marie Curie project named PROTECT. This project focuses on the effect of climate change on the dairy industry. My contribution is to investigate the impact of climate change on dairy waste and its microbes. I am fascinated by the idea of linking the climate change to food security. 
the sharp increased population sets new demands on research into food safety and production, along with the use of more eco-friendly techniques. By conducting microbial research and monitoring food processing factories, we can develop our understanding of how environmental factors can put a stress on microorganisms and how we can control them. Combined with the exploration of production and waste processes, we can improve the sustainability of food industries while assuring public health under the future reality. I like the quote, research the passion, the protection of our planet is the purpose. With this video, I want to inspire other people to participate in, the, in this world and develop their ideas. In conclusion, research has no gender, so no matter what is happening, never give up and love what you do. Thank you. Hi, my name is Meredith Schertzinger. I'm a PhD student at the University of St. Andrews and I'm studying physical activity. Now let's go back in time to where my journey began. In undergraduate, I was a football player for my uni until I had a career-ending knee injury. I was devastated and I didn't know what to do. At the time, I was studying psychology and I thought, what if I combined my love for sport with psychology? I received my master's in sport and exercise psychology at the University of Stirling. I enjoyed working with athletes, but through this program, I realized my passion was finding ways to help people be active, enjoy it, and stick with it. Because there are so many health benefits to being physically active. Physical activity is any form of movement that releases energy from your body, such as gardening, carrying groceries, and dancing. Exercise is physical activity that is planned in a structured or repetitive way. Exercise can be done alone or with others. And my PhD is looking to understand the varying forms of exercise. Of course, exercising alone, you receive the physical and mental health benefits. However, when exercising in a group, you may put in more physical effort, experience greater enjoyment, and are more likely to return. And there are mental health benefits to being part of a community. Therefore, when people are not routinely active, starting out with a group may be extremely helpful for someone to start and stick with exercise. What is something you wish you knew when you were at school? If there's something you're curious about, you can research it. The possibilities are endless. I had no idea growing up that I could study physical activity and sport. You are the next generation of scientists, so don't stop being curious and stay keen to follow your dreams.